So hi everybody, welcome to Wednesday night epic call. Jatana is actually on a plane headed from Ohio to Virginia. So I'm here stepping in. I'm gonna introduce our guest speaker. Her name is Holly Fishman, right? Like yes. okay. yeah. Yeah. My, my beach body name is uh, my beach body name is Holly Hillier, which is a little weird and confusing. Okay. <laughs> Well, I am pretty impressed with these stats. I when I asked her to send them over, I looked at them and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, y'all are gonna be blown oh away gosh. by her tonight. Oh so, I mean, just gonna introduce her. She's the current number five coach in the whole uh, organization. She's a 2018 top ten coach. She's a two-time elite coach, and she's a superstar diamond coach. So tonight, just make sure you put everything away, distractions away. Sorry, Cooper's in the background. Uh, and pay attention because she has something really special, and I think it's going to help you guys a lot. So Holly, if you want to go ahead and take over. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so I, like, consider myself still, like, this newer coach and really, like, newer face to – beach body um i mean jatana like four-time elite coach you guys have i mean just such an amazing leader um but tonight i kind of wanted to talk to you guys about like my story and how i got here because i've been very much like the slow and steady growth coach just like that consistent coach um in my business that helped me go from like, okay, I'm hitting success club 10 monthly to now I'm hitting success club a hundred. And that's kind of the part of the story that I want to share with you and what's really helping my coaches find traction as well. And they may be things you've heard before, but I'm hoping that some of the examples and really digging into it can help you. So to start just a little bit of my background, I've been coaching three and a half years now. And when I started, I was working a full-time corporate engineering job. So my first full year, I was doing both this, this plus, you know, my full-time job. And then I did uh, quit my full-time job to pursue Beachbody full-time. I had not fully replaced that full-time. I mean, I was making over six, you know, I was making over six figures in my corporate engineering job, but I knew that if I could put more time into this business that, you know, I could grow it. And so I quit my job and that week I got pregnant, which <laughs> we've been trying. So it was great, but it was one of those things like, okay, now like I've really got to do this before I have this baby. Um, so during that time, I really started digging into uh, my Facebook like page and, and ended up six weeks of bed rest at the end of my pregnancy. And then of course you have the six week postpartum period. And it was actually during all of that, that like my business really started to take off. And for me, my first year I was, I went premiere and then the next year was elite, but both of those, the premiere was good. Those were like with two real star diamond coaches, you know, two real diamond coaches, but elite was like a big struggle. And this again was right at that transition to really starting to use my like page and figure out how to become more of that like public figure and brand. And during that push for elite, I needed, I, I had some coaches who had, were fallen diamonds and they were like, yes, I'm going to like, I'm going to do it for you. And I was like, well, crap. <laughs> now I needed one more diamond, even those fallen diamonds getting back. And I hadn't gotten my husband a diamond, which was stupid, but I then had like 10 days to get my husband to diamond. And so I was like, all right, this is like, this is my push time. And during that time is when I realized the power of what I'd been doing the few months before. And that really was telling my story, creating my brand and knowing my avatar. Again, all things we've heard before, right? Like okay, like tell your story, know your brand. Like I've heard this a million times, but I did little things that like made a huge, huge difference. So when I was thinking like, okay, like what are my stories? You know, and sometimes I feel like we're telling the same stories again. So I started pairing up with members of my team, members of my coach's team who I didn't know, members of my success partners team. And I did interviews. And in these interviews, I actually got on, we got on zoom and I recorded them. 
And we, I had them ask me questions all the way back to like my childhood, right? So what was life like growing up? And of course, like in an hour interview, you can't like tell your whole life story. And so that's why I did it several times because I started noticing like different stories or themes would come out. So some of it was talking about my life growing up with, we moved every two years, right? And how has that affected me now? And how has that affected me in wanting to retire my husband? Then, you know, other themes were more about like my mom. Other themes were about like wanting more, being a really middle-class family. And I also noticed that when I recorded them, how I spoke in those recordings, when I was able to take pretty much that exact wording and put it in a post is when people connected. So that is one of the things that I started doing was recording every time I talked to someone, every time I told my story. And then you can, there are apps you can use, or I, I paid someone on Fiverr like $5 to transcribe my stories. And then I literally, after an hour interview, had like dozens of stories that I could create posts from, but all of them were in my own voice. And that is what started drawing people to me. I don't know how many times I've like sat behind the computer and been like, okay, I need to get a post out, right? And here's my story and I have whatever topic it is. But when I wrote it down, it just felt forced. Or I was like, gosh, why is this post like taking so long to write? I was like, this post is taking me 30 minutes to write. Like, this is ridiculous. I kept going back and forth, back and forth. And then by the time I got it posted, like, no traction. And I was like, but that was a good story. Literally saying it in like my normal talking voice, people could hear that. They could hear the excitement behind it or they could hear the emotion, like, you know, the sad emotion behind it, the depression, the anxiety, whatever it was, they could hear it behind it. And it started connecting. And that's when all of a sudden, okay, so people are connecting with me. I'd also really, when, you know, it wasn't so much like a big story post, I would really try to engage my audience, right? So I would ask questions in my posts. I'd ask them to share photos of their children or share photos of their pregnancy, but really started trying to create that community. And then I also, started myself as that brand. What did I represent? And so when I joined Beachbody, um, my coach is under Lindsay Matway. And so I was watching Lindsay and, you know, she always had like the faith, fitness, fashion. She had like her five freedom. She had like her five apps. And that's like what her entire brand revolved around. And so I was like, my brand revolve around. And when I was working that full-time corporate job, I had no idea who I was talking to. So I knew like, okay, so I want maybe like the corporate women, but like, how do I attract them? And they already have money and you know, they don't have kids. And like, what is that message? And I was lost and I was trying, I found myself literally just like talking to everyone (laughs) because I was like, I don't want to leave anyone out. And even like guys, like I was like, guys, like we can do this too. Like get big muscles, you know, like camera and chisel. And I mean, I literally was talking to everyone, which then resulted in me talking to no one because it was just so, so vague. And so, you know, I went back to what is my brand and who is my avatar. And when I started digging into my avatar, I had done avatar trainings before. And as I started listening to my stories, I started seeing different themes emerge. I started thinking, all right, I need to dig deeper into my avatar. So my avatar at that point, now I drink like all energized, but she like loved going out for like a cup of coffee. And so when I was talking to one of the, one of the people who was interviewing me, it was like, okay, well like, so you don't like like having a cup of coffee in your house. And I was like, oh, well, it's okay. But like, I have more fun, like going to Starbucks, like sitting, sitting in a coffee shop, and like doing my work. Like that's fun to me. That's like what I pictured, like my little entrepreneur life being like. And I was like, so that's what I like. And I started realizing that just saying like my avatar likes coffee or enjoys coffee wasn't enough. So when I talked to my team about it, some of my coaches were like, oh yeah, like my avatar would never leave the house for coffee. It's too expensive. My avatar would only make like, they they won't even drink like Keurig. They have to make it from like the ground coffee. It's like the cheapest possible, but like they need their mom caffeine fix. And I was like, well, that person is very different than the person I'm talking to who like goes to Starbucks and literally is paying also just for like the experience. And so I started going back through 
my avatar and saying, okay, so likes coffee, let's, let's dig deeper into that or loves target, right? Like, Oh, mom who like, just like loves to go to target. All right. Well, how many different aisles are there in target? Is she the mom who like loves like the garden section, the decorating section, the fashion section, you know, like home, like what is it about, you know, target where is she finding herself or is she the mom in like the dollar spot that can't leave without you know picking up something from the dollar spot because it's only a dollar so these are all different things that are going to allow me to connect in my post so every post that i started doing either revolved around my story and knowing again who that story was speaking to or my, again, my, my daily life, but connecting it back to that avatar. So if I'm at Target, what's the kind of story that's going to connect with my avatar there? Not just like, oh my gosh, another Target run, but is it, is it in the dollar spot? Is it like, I mean, I have like 50 bikinis from Target. It's stupid. My husband's like, stop buying bathing suits. But like, I just, <laughs> every season I have to buy a new one. I don't know why. I just love it. But like, will that connect with, with my, my avatar and like my person? So I had my stories, I had my daily life, which I always connected to my avatar post. I made sure that I started asking questions, engaging questions, which I know we hear a lot, but it really did help to create that community. And then finally, it was figuring out what is my brand, which all connects back into you know, my avatar and who I'm talking to and what I, you know, who I'm trying to attract to me. And so once I started figuring out those things, I was able to attract customers to me. And then the next step for me was how do I attract coaches to me? So I was attracting these people as customers and, you know, these coach potentials were following me. But I started looking at my feed and realizing I'm not really talking about coaching. And when I do it's kind of the fluffy part of coaching, right? So maybe it is like me at Starbucks on my computer, right? Like looking really cute and okay, that's, that's great. But what is it about coaching that made me do it in the beginning that gave me the confidence to quit my job and where am I looking to go? So I think my first, my fear was I'm not successful enough to talk about coaching. And I realized that the people that I'm talking to don't need to see someone making seven figures. What they need to see is someone being successful on their journey. And it's just like a challenge group. It's just like when we tell our new coaches, like you have to be a product of the product. So coaching is the same way. You need to be a coaching product of the product. So, you know, I took everyone on my journey with me as a challenger through all my transformations, through every single program. I take people on that every day. Why was I not taking them on that coaching journey with me? And so that's what I started doing. And I mean, we all know Jatana is like Instagram, like rock star. And, but now, I mean, Instagram stories makes it so much easier. I mean, Every time you do something with coaching, you just share it. It's not being salesy because it's literally what you're doing that day. And then I just make sure to tell people where I'm going. So in the beginning, I was telling them, look, I'm looking to retire from my full-time corporate job. And then it was, I'm looking to retire my husband who we like literally just retired. And now it is, we're looking to kind of move wherever we want and buy that forever home. But it's always that next step. So even when I retired, I was like, well, I retired. I'm at the pinnacle of whatever. No, it's this. And there's always more. And there's always something more that I want. And it's not, I rarely, I mean, I don't know the last time I mentioned like a number, like an income number, because that doesn't matter. Numbers just, you know, they might make people excited for a minute. Like, wow, that's, that's a lot of money. But it's not connecting emotionally. It's not connecting emotionally with my avatar. What does my avatar want? What does she need still in her life? And how could coaching fulfill that? So for me, my avatar's moms. I have, he's almost two now. I can't believe how big he's getting, but he's like still my baby. So, and then again, this is when my business exploded was when I figured out this avatar. When I figured out I was talking to moms and I was talking to new moms. 
And I was talking to a lot of first time moms, right. Who were going through the same struggles. And in terms of coaching, I was talking to moms who wanted to come home to their babies. Most of the moms on my team join to make an income and come home to their babies. And I never have I ever in my posts hidden that this is work. So when my coaches join my team, they know that this is work. So every day in my stories, nap time hustle, and it's either a picture of me or energize or my computer. I show them every day. Sam goes down for a nap. I'm doing my nap time hustle. Every night when Sam goes to bed, they know I'm working. Oh, emails or, you know, whatever it is. Somehow I'm showing them that I am working at night. Last night I said like, why do I work at night? Because all day I choose what I get to do. All day I'm with my son. All day I'm pouring into him. So yeah, I work at night, but that's because I didn't work all day because I get to pick my schedule. And so I make sure that my messages connect with them, but that again, they know it's work because in the beginning, I was afraid to tell people like this was work. I was like, this is so fun. Like just join me. I only work like an hour a day and I'm making all this money and I'm going to retire. And that's not true. We all know that's not true. We know it's work. And so as soon as my coaches join, they know it's going to be work. So all of these, I mean, they were little tiny changes that I made in terms of storytelling in my own voice, really diving into my avatar. So I knew who it was. And when I told my story, it was like, just like talking to my best friend and connecting with her. And for me, like my best friend's totally my avatar. We, our kids are five days apart. So that was a really easy connection for me to make. Like I'm talking to her, right? And then, and it made it less salesy too. Cause when I felt like when I was able to connect it with like a person, like it was just like recommending my favorite restaurant to her. Oh my God, I found these super cute shoes here. You know, what would people in normal life? And so I tried to make my stories like that, to make my posts sound like that. And that's when I was able to really connect with my cold market. And then again, I just took those, I took my stories and connected that with challengers. I took my stories and connecting that with my avatar and then turn that into coaching posts. Um, one other just little nuance I made, you know, we know our stories and people are like, I am so sick of telling my story. So I felt like I was talking all the time about like, I retired from my corporate job. I retired from engineering. I retired, 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 retired. It's like the same story. Like how many times can I say I retired from my corporate job? But what I did in each story or each post that I did was I painted a picture for people. So I took them like into my world. So I started literally becoming a storyteller. And there are there's some amazing books like about storytelling and how as human beings, that's what we connect with. You know, we connect with stories. We see ourselves in stories. So how did I do that? So one of my posts I started with, it was, a, it was like a rainy day where I was living. And um, I said, you know, two years ago, I was putting on my rain boots. I was walking to the train. And when I like stepped on that train, I could feel the humidity hit me, you know, and I stood there cramped in by people soaking wet on the way to a job I didn't want to go to. And so I was trying, you know, I was bringing in different senses, the smell, the heat, the humidity, the wetness, but really trying to make it so people could picture me in this train car on my way to work. And then talked about, you know, leaving that, being home in my pajamas on the couch, you know, working. Um, and so that, that was one picture of like retiring from work. Another was talking about, you know, I worked on the 14th floor in a corner office behind a huge mahogany desk in Washington, D.C., overlooking the National Monument. Like that is a powerful image. And yet that doesn't compare. My photo was of me on my computer, my son in front of me. That view would never compare to that view, right? So it was painting that picture for them, but then the emotional connection to my son, like every mom would give up. Maybe not every mom, not every mom <laughs> for me and my avatar, we would give that up to be home with our babies. Um, so those are just like little tiny changes that I started making to make sure I was bringing, bringing people into the story with me to make sure that I was connecting with them on that emotional level 
and giving them a chance to see themselves in my stories. And I know it sounds simple and it sounds so silly, but I find that when I am losing traction or I'm like, man, why are my success club points lower this month? It's normally when I'm super busy and stressed and I'm just kind of putting out fluff posts. I mean, they're not fluff, right? They're, they're still, I'm still trying to add value, but I'm not able to connect on an emotional level because I, I personally am disconnected. I personally am stressed. And that is when I find that my, I'm not connecting with people. So when I'm able to tell those stories, connect with them on those emotional levels, when I have moms come to me who are like, I've been following you for months and like X, Y, Z, that's exactly how I feel. And you know, there's all different stories. And when I started this business, I was depressed. So I talk about my depression and anxiety sometimes, but again, it's painting that picture of where I was, the girl who couldn't get out of bed to go to work, you know, and, and the dark room and all of those different things connect with people. And that's the other thing. And when you feel like you're telling that story, tweaking it a tiny bit each time is going to connect with someone different. And so again, I mean, it truly is being super vulnerable. And I, I felt like I, I've been traveling. I've been on the road, literally living out a suitcase for the last over a month now. We have two more months on the road and we're just changing houses. It's, it's crazy. And so I started noticing, I was like, man, my interaction's going down. And right now, uh, my husband and I are trying to get pregnant again. And I hadn't talked about that at all on social media. And I was like, that's a really hard thing to like talk about in, you know, out in the open. But I was like, that's, that's what's stressing me out. And I talked about it and the post just, it blew up because it was me and it was real and it was raw. And literally while writing that post, I was crying. And so I've never had a post that I've like been crying while writing and that emotionally attached to that has not just blown up and connected with other women because it, it's real. It's not trying to be that picture perfect image. And that too is definitely part of my brand. I can't, this, this is me. This is me. Top knot, like hardly, I don't really wear makeup. Like, and so knowing that that's part of my brand too is great. So I would say too, know who you are, be who you are. My first year, I tried to be like a, like a Lindsay Matway, right? Like, I mean, cause she was my upline and just like always having my hair done and my makeup done and really cute clothes on. And like, I don't have time for that. I'm trying to live out of a suitcase and keep a two-year-old alive and run a business. And I tell moms that, and they're attracted to that. So, you know, 100% know who you are, know who your avatar is, know your stories. And that is what is going to allow you to, to connect with other women. And that truthfully is the only thing in my business that, that changed was that, that connection. And I will say it probably took about three months of cold market, like on my like page, telling my story. I was going live and just, again, really trying to connect as me. And it probably took three months before I was able to transition fully from my personal page all the way to my like page, still hitting success club from cold market. But that's the only thing that changed in those three months was focusing on storytelling avatars and adding that adding value. Um, so I don't know if that was helpful. If I can answer questions for you guys, um, it's not concrete, but like do the interview and just like listen back to yourself. You're going to be amazed at what comes out of it and sit down. Even if you have your avatar, look at what your avatar is and start digging into it more. Ask more questions, go deeper. It will change how you talk to people. If you guys have any questions, you can either chat them in the box or you can unmute yourself. And you guys, I'm happy to answer questions about anything, um, any part of like my process. Um, yeah, anything that I can answer for you guys. Hi, Holly. It's, this is Callie. Um, Hi, Callie. So... I have an issue kind of with like the avatar thing. Did you like spend a whole day just like coming up with things that you really liked things that kind of made you, you, 
where, I mean, say, where do you find this avatar training that is going to help you really hone in? Because I feel like my warm market is, is gone. Yeah. And I need to start talking more to my cold market, but my avatar isn't really honed in. My storytelling kind of sucks. People say I'm motivating and inspiring them. Right. But nobody wants to join. And when they join a challenge group, they suck it up. So, so to speak, <laughs> they don't fully commit. Right. And and that's a problem I have because I'm one of those people that when I've committed to something, I'm a hundred percent, I'm all in, I go deep. Yes. Um, Yes. So one thing I will, I'll send you guys, it is another team call. So Ashley Lachlan is my success partner. And in this team call, she talks about avatars and there's some avatar training in there as well as worry web training. So a worry web, it goes along with storytelling. So it's super helpful. Um, kind of going along with this, but a worry web is like when you sit down and write down like the different parts of your life where you've had, I don't know, issues, struggles, troubles. Um, so I'm, I will give, give that, um, I'll get that to you guys. Um, but that is a great place to start in terms of avatar. So I probably spent, I don't know, an hour writing down like my avatar, not a full day. So it was, you know, and I think from like, pretty much was just like, me at that point. And I will say my avatar changes as I do. My brand changes as I do, especially as like a mom of like a young kid. Like there's a big difference between having a newborn and having a toddler and having a kid in school. Like your life changes completely in all of those phases. And so my avatar for my avatar it really is writing down, I mean like everything from like what do they wear? What are the brands of clothing that they wear? What age are they? Um what are they eating? What are they feeding their kids? Ages of their kids? How many kids do they have? Um, and thinking about like in my daily life, like what brands am I using and what does that kind of represent? So I've really, you know, I like the moms who, you know, they are buying the organic food and spending more on the organic food for their kids. They've switched out all the you know, they're using all natural cleaning products. They, but I'm also not like a super crunchy mom, you know? So like I thought I'd like cloth diaper and I was like, Oh no, I can't do that. So, you know, those little things like besides being like, Oh, like organic mom. Well, that can mean a lot of things. Right. So I don't cloth diaper and I don't have time for that. Oh, maybe showers every three days. You know, those things like matter. So it was really taking stock of where do I shop? what do I buy? And this is the easiest way that I found to do it because it can be just so huge. Where do I shop? What do I buy? And then what do those things represent? So if I went out and yeah, like bought an organic cleaner, what does that mean? Well, I didn't used to use an organic cleaner and now like using all natural deodorant and I've been breastfeeding my son for almost two years. So I connect with moms who breastfeed. I talk about breastfeeding all the time. That's not everyone, right? So those things were big and like what what do you splurge on where do you spend your money and where do you pull back because those things will connect as well one of my coaches i just had coffee with her and she's like sushi she's doing dave ramsey's course really into budgeting and that's huge and it's been very interesting how, when as she talks to people they know that she's like a penny pincher budgeter and that's very much in her scripts so that whole avatar part, that all being part of her brand, then plays into her scripts. So you can see how like knowing your story, knowing your avatar, and then having scripts, it all connects. And so like, she was like, I could never use a script to use, Holly, because it doesn't sound like me, you know, even, and we all are always looking for these magic scripts, but the magic scripts are the ones that connect with your story and your avatar. Um, so I will get you guys that training, but yeah, in terms of avatar, it really is. I just like look around me. I'd spend an hour, probably an hour doing it. Um, because also if you spend too long, it just like gets overwhelming and you like go down this deep, big rabbit hole. And so if I like feel like it's not finished, I'll go back like the next day, maybe for 30 minutes. I can't an hour's too long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't do it all day. <laughs> Other questions, guys, or any way I can help you? I have a question on, it's an avatar question of sorts also, but 
Um, one of the things you said is, you know, how old is your avatar? Mm -hmm. um, because it, it seems, it must sound funny to a whole lot of you, but when you're older, you're, you've got a ton of story. I mean, I've got, you know, twice as much story as everyone else. And it's a lot of story to kind of siphon through. Mm -hmm. So at what age? I mean, yeah, so because I have a story that can connect to people in their twenties and to in their thirties and forties and fifties. And you know, and frankly I don't feel fifty five, so I connect to a much younger crowd. Yeah. Than my age. Yeah. But I don't so, want to come across as like this old woman trying to be young and hot and sexy, although, you know I think I do to some degree because I refer to myself you know, as a badass grandma, so keep up with me kind That's, of thing. Yeah. Um, so, but, but do you, are there other badass grandmas out there who want to be just like you? That's just, yeah, that's the, that's. Yeah. Where those, I have to work. Toward. Those are the people you probably want to find because I bet, because more of those people Hopefully. are going to identify with you than, you know, the, the younger crowd, right? So yes. you want those bad, so that, that's, I mean. I don't think I'm talking to you, <laughs> but, but I would think in terms of your avatar, you want people like you, and that is going to help you in terms of recruiting coaches too, because you want other badass grandmas who, you know, why, why did you start coaching? You know, is there a part of your, why you started coaching that those people can relate to as well? I would think yeah. most of the time people's <clears throat> avatar is around their age. It's around what they are going with. while we have older stories our biggest story is just us sharing our life every day right and and where we are and why you're doing this now and those people that connect are normally i mean my avatar you kind of like a 10 i usually have like a 10 year range like oh well, i guess mine's about 10 years because my i mean mine's like 27 to 37 so that that's kind of my my range so, cause I know, I mean, there's a lot of like, I, I'll, I'll be, I'll be 35 this year and there's a lot of, a lot younger moms than me, but like a 21 year old mom versus a mom who had her first baby at 33, both parents making over six figures. Like those are two different scenarios. Mm -hmm. And so I know that. So that's, that's not the, that's not the new mom I'm talking to and that's okay. So it, it does that little bit of difference in age is going to change things. Well, yeah, because the hottest topic for my age group right now is everybody's, you know, hot flashing and night sweating and menopausing. Well, that's not me. Mm -hmm. I did that at 26 because mm -hmm. that's when I had a total hysterectomy. So mm -hmm. I can't relate to that anymore because I don't have any of that. Yeah. And, you know, so then that makes it get too narrow because I can't really, I can talk to what it was like way back. Right. You know, three decades ago, but mm -hmm. I can't talk to it today. Yeah. And so I can't relate to the people that are like, Oh my God, you know, I'm stripping off my clothes. And right. It's like, Cause that's not where I'm right. at. Well, what are like, what are their like and fitness struggles around that? Like, is it, you know, because that's one part of what they're going through. Right. Mm. But in their life too, I mean, is it to the point where, yeah, are they, are they gramp? So my mom, is she's like, maybe I'll coach. And I was just visiting her. And so she was like, you know, there's, all, she was like, there are plenty of people my age who like their kids are leaving home and like, it's time to focus on themselves. And you know, how does health and fitness part fit into their lives? How does the coaching part fit into their lives? Right? So while there may be some things where you don't identify with them, there's so many other parts and it's okay if you like go 10 years younger, right? Like that's, that's fine if that's who you're identifying more with. I, I don't think you should go after 20 year olds, but like 10, 15 years younger, it's not going to be, you know, I guess it depends. It all depends on when people have kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? I look at my, I looked at my insights and all of my followers, um, almost 90% are 25 to 45. Okay. Well, that's I have very few followers in my age category. 
Yeah. Well, then that tells you, I mean, who's, who's watching, who is identifying as long as you feel like you identify with that, which it sounds like you do. Right. I don't know. It could be a sign of immaturity too. So maybe I'll just roll with that. But yeah, I mean, I I think it is. Yeah. I think right now, like from what you're saying, it is a, okay. Like what is my brand? Who am I talking? I mean, that is the question, Mm -hmm. right? Like who, Who that's the hardest part that. Yeah. That, and that's where I was when I was like, am I, who am I talking to? Like a lot of my friends have kids. A lot of them don't like a lot of them are working corporate jobs or stay at home moms. I felt like I was trying to talk to everyone and that was the problem. So it is easier like being like, oh, I'm a new mom. Like that's a very easy thing for me to like hone in on, but then I honed in even more. So I do think by you figuring out exactly who you're talking to, it's, it's going to be huge and it's going to make posting easier. Like once you know who you're talking to, it's so much easier easier because you're just talking to that one pipe well is you know trying to connect with everyone mm-hmm. you know trying to connect with a 25 and a 45 year old that's crazy different yeah crazy different. <laughs> it's too crazy. hard yeah it's too hard it's too hard so it's scary because when i was there my fear was that i connect with no one right that okay like i'm now if i hone in too much then I get rid of all these other people who, who could be potential customers. And that was like my big fear, but the opposite ended up happening. You know, more of the right people found me and I was able to connect with them. So yeah, I don't know the correct answer, um, but (laughs) it is figuring out who, who it is you're talking to and who, yeah, who relates to you with where you are. Yeah. I just need to find a bunch Um, of really badass grandmas raising grandkids. Yeah. They're that's, out there. That's what I do. Yeah. I raise a grandchild and that kind of stuff. So that's it. They're that's, awesome. who I, that's who I want to find. And I just yeah. need to figure out how to find them. Yeah. They, so, you know, you know, now it's just, yeah, talking, yeah. To, those, talking to those women and yeah, yeah. Find, finding them. All my uh, friends with money hire personal trainers. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and they do. They have, they have a lot of money. And so they just hire someone to come to their house. Yeah. Run into that a lot. Yeah. And there's always, and that is, I think, move the power of moving out of like your warm market into your cold market, yeah. right? That, that's what's going to be huge. And I will say for me, um, so I said I was using like my Facebook like page, and what I was able to really hone in on that app bar and target the right people in ads. So I paid $3 a day to bring like the right people to my page and so it's the exact same thing with like instagram um once you find your hashtag or your people then you're able to target them start commenting liking following you know bringing them over to your feed and so it was you know all all that combined but i had to figure out who i was targeting first before i could get like my winning ad or else i'd just be spending a bunch of money and spamming people you know, who weren't my avatar. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. What are your top resources um, that you were talking about learning to storytell? So you have like a book you read or? I will see if I can download. um, So I do, I think it's Daniel Pink. Let me, um, there is one book. I've got it on Audible too. It's not so great on audible some books are really boring on audible. okay um <laughs> let me write this down so i'll think i'll tell you guys i'll get the name of the storytelling book um but i did take um, for growing my like page and in there there's like tons of modules on storytelling and that i learned a lot about my storytelling but i also believe in there they have the the pdf for like um, like all the interview questions. So I'll get that for you guys because that was really interesting and really and avatar training was more just like the social team builder stuff. But it was nothing like I mean it was storytelling I read the book, did the interviews, and then I just like practiced, you know. <laughs> um it's I literally it took me a while. So again, like I love how Hanis was saying, like looking at her insights. So I was doing the same thing with my post and figuring out like which one's connected and then starting comparing and contrasting like why they were connecting with people. But I can get you guys the um, 
storytelling um, book that, that I read that was pretty good. It's, it's, it's really just kind of like a history. What was helpful to me was what parts through history, like have people been drawn to? Because then I was able to pull it to be like, okay, these are the parts I'm going to hit on. And a lot of it really is making sure somewhere in there, there's an emotional connection and knowing what my avatar would be emotionally connected to. So for me, again, moms and babies, like when I do a like super sentimental post, like about like being a mom, that's a huge hit on my page. Like that, that connects with my avatar. So it's the storytelling plus avatar. Um, like, can you message people on your like page if they're not your friend on personal page? So you can, you can message them. It will go to their other inbox if you're not friends. If they have commented on your photo, you can message them directly from the photo on their comment and it goes to the regular inbox. So I, that, that's one way that I was able to, to message really easily. If they message you directly, then you can message them back. Yeah. So, Holly, I was wondering, like, my husband doesn't care for me to post too much about my kids, mm -hmm. but that's a big part of who I am. So, um, what would you, I guess, consider yeah. in that instance? So, I have a coach. She's got four kids. Um, and in the beginning, her husband was like, you can talk about them, but you can't post like any photos of their faces. So his big thing was more like the photos and really being out there. And of course, like don't talk about schools and locations and that kind of stuff. And so what I had her do was, you know, for me, like a big part is like my son's like always around in my workouts and it's just like the craziness. And so after her workouts, she would post a photo of like her feet and like toys all over the place or, you know, the path of children that every month children were not in, but it was posted in of like five or six of the shit lined up for dinner and be like my kids eat the same thing I do and then like the recipe mm -hmm. um so and she'd post you know selfies of just her and like the back of the car seat when she was you know on the way to wherever so she didn't use her children's faces, but the stories of being a mom, the, the bags under her eyes from no sleep, the, I have to go pick another kid up because they're sick at school stories. Like all of those stories were still in there and still connecting even without their faces physically being in the photos. So I don't know if that helps or if he just like doesn't want you to talk about your kids at all. Okay. No, that, <laughs> I think he's okay with talking about the kids, but yeah, the, the, the specifics. Photo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I know that's a very touchy. And now her husband's like fine with it. The longer she's in the business now, he's, he's good with it. But yeah, that was, it was a good way to like ease into things. <laughs> Any other questions? This is fun. I mean, I know Jatana is like, amazing at her stories and all the attraction marketing so you guys have great example there as well um i love that jatana and i are presenting at summit together because when you look at like our instagrams like we are just like so different and i just think it's such a great example of how like to you can be a top coach like no matter what you know but it is about like for me it's just been about connecting with people and, and being real. Um, and Jatana's like personality just like shines through, you know, in, in her Instagram. And I think that's what attracts people to her. Um, so, but I, I do love that when you look at all the top coaches, like we're all so different and everyone has really different messages, but different people connect with them. And that's why I tell my coaches all the time. Like, it's just, just be yourself. Please do not try to be me. Like you're gonna, you, you don't want to be me. <laughs> like my life is a hot mess. Like I am traveling all the time. It's crazy. Sometimes I don't want my life. Like it's just, it's insane. And you don't want to be me, you know? And so be yourself and don't try to force it. And the more you are yourself and real and raw, the more people are going to relate to it, but you have to be able to tell it in a story too, you know, not just like a picture of you looking a mess. You know, there's got to be 
the whole story behind it so people know what's what's going on in your life as scary as that can be or what's happened in the past to shape you and make you the person that you are today so while it sounds abstract really sitting down and writing those things down just made a huge difference i stopped i stopped following all of the coaches like that made a huge difference um, because i just I couldn't, I just started trying to be them. I wanted to be, I wanted to be Lindsay Matway or, you know, Bonnie or Jatana or one of these coaches. It just looks perfect all the time and I couldn't do it. And so I just felt like a failure. And then the second I stopped trying and just wore my hair to top out every day in my life, like as a second, my business changed. <laughs> so hopefully that helped you guys. I had one real quick question. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering, I, I'm really new at this, so I'm trying to figure out how do you get your target audience to see you? How, how do you get your avatars to, to see you? I mean, I, I switched all my pages to public and stuff, but yeah. it seems like the biggest thing for me is, is how can I count on people? Are you, what, what platforms are you using? Like Facebook and Instagram? Uh, Facebook okay. And, Instagram. and are you using mm -hmm. your personal Facebook page? Okay. Yes. So I use my personal Facebook page for the first year and a half of my business before I switch into my like page. Um, personal Facebook pages are awesome. So you can't, I mean, you can try to find like your target avatar on a personal Facebook page, um, but it's harder. So with my personal Facebook page, I was just, how I did it was I started thinking about like my high school people aren't necessarily like my avatar. Like I went to a very small high school, like in the country, like, they're not, they're not like people. I like keep in touch with one person, but my college people are. So I would go to my college friends and I was already friends with on Facebook, go and look at their friends list and just go through friends we had in common that like all went to UVA and then add them because I was like, you know, higher education. Like I was like, these people are more, they're more my avatar. And so that's how I would try to hone in now. Also like before, again, I was working the corporate job. So it just, I was kind of all over the place, but once I was able to hone in on like, okay, moms, I also started looking at is there a profile picture of kids in it. Yes. Avatar. Right. Like, so literally by like looks alone and on Instagram, I start, so there, I'm sure Jatana told you guys, I feel like talking even about Instagram is silly when you have Jatana as your coach. Um, but I use the app called Captivate, which is only available on iPhone. And so what Captivate does is you're able to look up like a profile of someone that, that you follow, right? That has like a bigger following, not a beach body coach, but like there's like a fashion blogger or like a mommy blogger or something that you follow and you type their name in Captivate and it brings up all of their followers. So the hope is that their followers are going to be similar to you, right? Other mommies and fashion people who like that type of fashion are following them. And you can see their profile photos. So I go to Captivate, I type in the name of the profile, and then I start looking at all their followers and you just click follow, follow. So if it looks like, you know, around my age, mom with like one or two kids, I click follow. And that is how I'm trying to, and then once I follow, I'm, you know, making sure that I'm liking, commenting, engaging with them, checking out profiles. Um, but that is how I am trying to proactively follow people so they, so that they follow me back and start seeing my content. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think Captivate's only on iPhone right now. I've had so many people ask that. Um, so I'm sorry if you're an Android user. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Holly, for coming yeah. and talking with us. So everybody, the call will be put on YouTube by tomorrow afternoon, early evening. Make sure you subscribe just in case I don't get it up fast enough for you. You'll get a notification. So, um, if you guys don't have any other questions, we're going to end for tonight. Thank you so much, Holly. And yeah, thank you guys so much. We will see you guys in the epic page. Good night. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>